Greetings again everybody, welcome back to Dark Souls. Now before we head back into the thick of things, let's just do what we usually do and catch up with Liz and Chester. Thank goodness thou art safe. What is thy wish? I offer thee my all. Not long ago, I had another visitor, a human like thine self, from a far away time. Only he was dreadfully odious, and I'm afraid that he is still amongst us. He wore a hat and a long black coat. <laughs> was thine eye glancing hither? Thou needst not hide thy wonder. I am a mushroom, after all. <laughs> May the flames guide thee. Now, in Ulusu Township, Chester kind of assaulted us, so let's ask him about that. Oh, you. You have quite some nerve. Or are you just thick? Fine then. What is it that you need? Well, you've quite the nerve. I've had enough of you. Well... I'll be seeing you, if you survive your travels. Somehow I get the feeling he's not very fond of us. But anyway now, uh, let's continue where we left off last time. And head into the next area, the Chasm of the Abyss. Now the Chasm of the Abyss is very reminiscent of another area from the main game we haven't visited yet. The Tomb of the Giants, and you will see what I mean when we get there eventually. Now right off the bat, we we find a little trap. Because this crystal lizard here, unless we're able to kill it in one hit before it runs away, like we actually did, will guide us right into the open arms of those glowy eyes over there. Now, obviously, it's best to pull those out one by one, because even though we can kind of see the glowing in the distance, we can't be exactly sure how many there are. And of course, we also don't know how many of them are sorcerers, so it's best to be careful naturally. Which happens to be rule number one in Dark Souls, just in case you forgot. I know, I know, this all is really riveting to watch for you guys. But hey, to speed things up, I brought a weapon that should take care of them nicely. Yep, one hit. This is, uh, well, what the game calls the scythe, although it's actually a bardic from the looks of it. And it's a halberd class weapon, and like most halberd class weapons, it is fairly powerful. There's one thing unique to halberd weapons though, and that would be, well, a certain penalty if you miss an enemy. And that penalty isn't just missing the enemy in itself. No, no, it's not as simple as that. You actually get a longer recovery time if you miss. If you hit though, you're free to follow up right away. Now that's the last pair of eyes there, so let's take it out quickly. And then, well, plunge into the dark. Well actually, we can see another pair of eyes, just it's rather faint, and of course it's a sorcerer. And that glowy down there, that's the reason to come here basically. The dark beat spell. It is, of course, abyss magic. It's kind of a spread shot, and it's really, really powerful. Although not the most powerful spell that came with Artorias of the Abyss. The very limited vision of this area can be kind of difficult to deal with at times. But hey, luckily, most enemies uh, emanate some form of light, so we can see them from a distance. And hey, hey, what's that down there? That looks familiar. Speaking of familiar, let's read the description of the humanity. This black sprite is called humanity, but little is known about its true nature. If the soul is the source of all life, then what distinguishes the humanity we hold within ourselves? So I don't feel like challenging all those giant humanities at once, so I'll go the other way and drop down. But hey, we took no falling damage and there's Alvina. Well, Alvina, you don't know it yet, but I betrayed you in the future. Now, Alvina is one of Artorias' companions, and let's just follow her around a little bit. I think she's gonna lead us somewhere. I mean, she doesn't know what we're gonna do yet. 
At this point, she hasn't even established the forest hunters. Lucky for us, those humanities don't seem to follow us around that much. But hey, Alvina's gone now and... Yes, this wall looks suspicious, but it's gone now. So yeah, this time around we will have to fight those humanities there. Because I reckon even though they don't follow us around that much, there are gonna be a few behind us. I also wanna know what the glowy thing there is. At least they don't have any attacks aside from touching us. And if they touch us though, that hurts us quite a lot. So let's not let that happen. And I, up ahead, I think I... I could catch a glimpse of what is actually up ahead. It is Sif. Or rather a... Baby Sif. And hey Sif, you don't know it yet, but I killed you in the future. And Sif is the other one of Artorius' companions, his closest friend so to speak. So maybe this has something to do with what happened to Artorius? Maybe, we'll find out. I mean, Sif must have been with Artorius when shit happened. We basically just saved Sif. And, well, if we hadn't killed him in the future yet, we would have gotten a different cutscene when fighting him. And, well, why not show it to you right now? I quite like this alternate version of Sif's pre-boss fight cutscene. Uh, it increases the emotional impact the fight has in you quite a bit. And I say that even though I fought him like 10 times maybe before I first saw that one. But yeah, when we saved him we actually got the Cleansing Great Shield. Which is a version of Artorius' Great Shield that has been corroded by the Abyss. But while we go up this elevator, let's read the description. The steel great shield used by Knight Artorius, who succumbed to the Abyss. Artorius, deeply scarred by the Abyss, used this to form a barrier to protect his compatriot Sif. Although this drained the shield, its magic defense remains high. And with that elevator, we now have unlocked a shortcut to the arena where we actually fought Artorius. So, um, Artorius left the shield behind to save Sif. And well, when we found Artorius and also killed him, we saw that his left arm was broken. And we're still not sure what exactly did that to him. I mean, we saw those bunch of giant humanity surrounding Sif, but I kind of doubt they did that to Artorius. Uh, because, well... Unless I'm mistaken, those giant humanities don't actually inflict any physical harm, they just straight out suck the life force out of you. Of course, I might be mistaken there because, well, game mechanics. A couple moments ago, you might have noticed that it decided to go down instead of up. That is because, well, if you go up, we will come back to where we need to be. Even though our final destination is down, in this case, going down leads us to the optional stuff. And there is one thing that we will want to find down here, and it's right over there actually, that glowy. Of course to get there we need to, you know, <laughs> get through a bunch of those humanities, but we have already seen that they're, they're hardly a problem. They come in different sizes, but even then, it doesn't really matter. And the Black Flame. You remember Combustion, right? It's it's a fairly nice spell. Well, 
This is a Abyss version of Combustion. It does, well, in addition to fire damage, also a bit of physical damage, so it can break through shields, which is really nice. It does a little less damage than Great Combustion, but that's alright, because it also damages stamina. And right next to this item, of course, is one of those sorcerers, but hey, we can get the drop on him easily. Now, if we were down there, he would have become a problem because he can snipe us, but that's not the case. But yeah, this is the room with the many humanities we've been in previously, only we took a different route. But hey, now I guess it's time to finally take care of those. Of course, I'm not gonna show it all to you because it's gonna take a little bit. It's really just more of the same. But you can just pull out a couple of them every time. So yeah, let's drop down there because there appears to be a glow we can't really reach otherwise. And if we can't reach it any other way, it has to be special, right? Oh, the help me carving, nice. So dropping down here, we're back where we picked up the black flame. So let's cut back to where we were and get invaded. Alright then. So let's fight that person there and hopefully not die like the last time. I mean, I have to be successful one of these days. I see. Pursuing a strategy of trying to lure me into an area I haven't explored yet, hoping to, well, guide me into some enemies. But yeah, he notices I don't fall for that. So now we can actually fight. He does use endgame magic and an endgame catalyst though, so I don't think I will be too successful. Oh, speak of the devil. But hey, no hard feelings, too bad. On my way back here, I obviously just ran past every enemy. So now, well, I, I get hit in the back by a sorcerous uh, dark orb. Anyway, progress. We're here to make it. You may or may not be surprised, but we're actually pretty close to our destination. As can be seen by that fog gate down there. Presumably that means that we're getting to the source of this whole abyss thing that has been spreading over Ulasil. I know I kinda brought this up already in the last video, but this might actually be the very spot where the abyss is in our future version of Lordran. Because, well, New Londo, which is where the abyss is in the future, is actually pretty close to the Darkroot Woods slash the Royal Woods. So, geographically, it just might work out. But yeah, now there's nothing between us and the Fog Gate anymore, so before we go through it though, let's check out what's down there and hey, a uh, reddish glow that reminds me of certain enemies we've seen so far. But I can't really get a good look at it. Maybe if we angle it right, we can actually shoot it, which, by the way, we can. But let's not waste our time with that and actually get through the fuck it finally. Manus, father of the Abyss, the final plot boss of Artorias of the Abyss. And yeah, I'm summoning a phantom. If you move to the left right away, you will be able to see a summoning sign. And it will summon... Holy shit, this is so awesome. The Great Grey Wolf Sif. Now Sif doesn't really do much damage in this fight. 
but since uh, Manus is a very ferocious opponent, even the slightest distraction can help a lot at times. Of course, his summoning sign only shows up if you actually save him. Observant viewers will have noticed that Manus's left arm is actually the same arm that dragged us to the past in the first place. It's also his favorite means of attacking us. That combo there is pretty evil. Of course, he can also extend his arm like this. It's kind of tricky to dodge too, but once you got the timing figured out, it's no problem anymore. You probably saw my blood stain there in the distance. That is obviously because this isn't my first attempt. A Manus is, I think, the boss with the highest HP out of all the bosses, which is also why I am using a power within. So I can deal a little more damage in the early stage of the fight. It should help a bit. And there's some speculation regarding who Manus actually is. A lot of people seem to like the idea that he's actually the furtive pygmy so easily forgotten, briefly mentioned in the intro cinematic of the game. That theory also hinges on the progenitor Kath mentions when we encounter him being the furtive pygmy. And of course also on Kath not flat out lying to us, it's always a possibility. Personally, I like the idea that Kath is telling the truth. But I'm not so much of a fan of man as the furtive pygmy myself. It is heavily implied though, I can't really deny that. But for some odd reason, I just happen to like the idea of the furtive pygmy not actually being in the game. The main reason for people believing that the furtive pygmy is the same as Manus is that the furtive pygmy was the one who discovered the dark soul. According to Kath, at least. And the Dark Soul actually might be uh, the original form of humanity, before it got broken up and separated in all these tiny humanity sprites. So essentially, the Furtive Pygmy would have created mankind and may have been the first human. And well, as for Manus, it appears that humanity is actually coming from the Abyss. I mean, we've seen those enemies up there, right? So yeah, uh, Manus might actually be the furtive pygmy, even though I'm not so much of a fan of that idea. Speaking of humanity, that spell that just almost devastated us was actually composed of humanity. And um, you might have also noticed that it brought the silver pendant with me. We can actually counter that using the silver pendant, and it's recommended to do so. You can dodge those spells he uses of course, but uh, the timing can be really difficult to find out. So, uh, the silver pendant is the best way to do it. Of course, uh, the fact that his spells are composed of humanity, even though you can barely see it, uh, actually also suggests that this might be the furtive pygmy or at least a being very much connected to the dark soul. And this is the silver pendant in action. Uh, whenever a Manus does a spell, it's best to just spam it until it's over, because the pendant's effect only lasts for one, maybe two seconds before it wears off. Overall, I find this fight pretty damn difficult, uh, but it's a little bit less fun than the Artorias boss fight in my opinion, because I think that bosses that actually use skills similar to the one the player is using are kind of interesting. Also, Artorius' boss fight is a Berserk reference, and they really love Berserk. But yeah, uh, while Manus is a pretty hard fight, I still had less trouble figuring out his moves and how to dodge them than any of the other bosses from Artorius of the Abyss we've seen so far. Since I briefly mentioned Artorius just now, um. Well, Manus might also be the one who broke Artorius' arm. Then Artorius somehow escaped from the fight and got cornered by those humanities we saw where we rescued Sif and then he created the barrier. Uh, then he succumbed to the abyss and uh, left for the arena we fought him in. I don't know where he would have gone from there, 
but probably somewhere out in the public where people can see him and actually, you know, notice that he is a fallen hero. Because, well, from what we know, that never really became a known fact. So yeah, with a little bit of Sif's help, we almost got Manus down already. This fight can end very badly any second, actually. And there will be times where you get him down to almost 0 HP and then he will pull one last fuck you punch. Most likely Abyss Magic, like so. Well, luckily, we have the Silver Pendant. And we're able to use it just in time. This fight is a marathon and not a sprint. This is the case for a lot of Dark Souls bosses, but I think we got this now. Let's just not get too brave and... Yep. There, we did it. Now, the a fact that I only showed you my successful attempt might give you an idea of how many tries it took me. We got the Soul of Manus. And uh, I will show you what you can make of that in a bit. But first, let's actually check out Dusk. Doesn't seem to, to actually uh, say anything. At this point I figure it's probably best to just leave her, at least she's safe for now. So we saved the princess today, uh, I will say goodbye now though, and hope to see you again next time. But stay for a little longer and you'll see what you can make from Madness's soul.